In Latin America, journalism can be a dangerous profession. And now that includes reporting the truth about the COVID-19 pandemic. Sunny Figueroa works for Guatemala's independent investigative reporting outlet, Vox Populi. Last year, he and a colleague began publishing reports about corruption during the pandemic that implicated close friends of the president. That's when the president labeled us the terrible two. I was detained for 21 hours and beaten. We're now getting death threats and are being followed constantly. A new study from Reporters Without Borders suggests that with the exception of Costa Rica and Uruguay, freedom of news media has diminished across the board since the pandemic began. Authoritarian governments attack, slander and insult journalists in public. Then it becomes an online campaign which can quickly spiral into physical attacks against journalists. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro is consistently labeling the media as a public enemy for its coverage of the pandemic, encouraging his supporters to attack journalists both online and in person, says Colombi. A common denominator is the use of social networks to discredit and attack journalists who do not paint a government's handling of the pandemic in a favorable light. The governor of the Venezuelan state of Aragua accused journalist Gregoria Diaz of being paid to lie in a report about the acute shortage of hospital beds and medicine. She tells me she's being investigated under an anti-terrorism financing law. Oh, no, te voy a negar. I won't deny that I'm frightened, that I'm always looking over my shoulder, that I don't know when this so-called charge against me will result in my arrest. And in Chile, a prominent independent journalist who suggested that the health ministry was under-reporting the number of COVID-19 infections and deaths was accused of spreading fake news, of trying to destroy the government and of being anti-patriotic. It was a message to the rest of the media to behave. If you want to be Chilean, if you want to be, uh, you want to uh, show patriotism, you wouldn't uh, contest the official data. That was the message. The Reporters Without Borders report makes the point that in the context of a global sanitary emergency, journalism is the primary vaccine against a virus called disinformation. Yet theirs and our own investigation suggests that the pandemic is actually being used to justify, in many cases, limiting transparency and freedom of expression. You see a Newman Al Jazeera, Santiago. Okay, that's the picture in South America. Let's look more broadly now at the World Press Freedom Index, which looks at 180 countries in all. It shows journalists are partially or completely blocked from doing their jobs in more than 130 nations. The worst offenders, North Korea, China, Vietnam, Iran and Syria. Several governments have been accused of using the pandemic to silence critics with laws against what they see as fake news. Christopher Sabatini is a senior researcher fellow for Latin America at Chatham House in London. He joins us on Skype. Uh, Christopher Sabatini, welcome to the news hour. Which countries are the Thank worst you. outstripping other nations around the globe? Well, Latin America has always had uh, a difficult relationship between, especially during rising uh, polarization, uh, the rise of populist governments. Uh, but And so consequently, as a result, the Reporters Without Borders has listed Latin America as one of the most dangerous regions in the world to conduct journalism. What makes it particularly striking is that these, in many cases, these are under governments that are nominally elected, nominally democratic. And so what we've seen is already this, uh, these attacks against journalists, this polarization in which freedom of expression is caught in the middle between oftentimes uh, uh, legitimate concerns about uh, information and, and the need for data as well as the autocratic ambitions of, of elected leaders. Mm -hmm. And now we have the justification of COVID uh, into that. And so we're seeing places, as your previous report mentioned, in Chile, in Guatemala, in which journalists are particularly being targeted. Um, and, and reasons that, that sort of uh, deny the very threat of COVID and, and undermine the ability to address it. Do presidents, prime ministers, health ministers around the world, in, in the prism of COVID and coronavirus, maybe only have themselves to blame here because, you know, the first three, six months of this 
15, 18 months of coronavirus was kind of defined in a sense at those presidential and prime ministerial meetings where ministers and presidents would stand up and say, we're going to win, we're going to beat it, it's yeah. going to be OK in three months, it's going to be OK in, 20, in, in the 2021. And it clearly was never going to be OK. And the ecosystem of reporting now is live coverage on international television news channels that's recorded. So it's dead easy to spool back six months, nine months and say, but, sir, you said such and such a thing in January 2020, and here we are one year later and nothing's improved. That's precisely it, Peter. The classic case right now is India, where Modi and India, many people thought they had dodged the bullet in being able to uh, avoid a massive infection rate. And now we see, of course, the terrible news coming out of India of death rates, shortages. And Modi has actually asked that, the Modi government has asked that Twitter uh, prohibit any sort of information that contradicts the government. And so in many of these cases, what were once considered success stories and uh, presidents such as, of course, the pre former President Trump in the United States being somewhat cavalier about their ability to address this are now finding it's much more complicated as a policy issue at the same time as they're sort of getting embarrassed by a media that is confronting them directly and demonstrating and revealing data that embarrasses them and puts them in, in doubt in terms of their own sort of in the case of Modi or Trump or Bolsonaro or AMLO in, in, in uh, Mexico, the Mexican president, sort of challenging their own sort of uh, macho attitudes towards containing the virus. I guess it's a tough call for journalists because part of the ecosystem of journalism has changed. It's people doing their own thing. It's people yeah. doing investigative journalism with no backup, no support per se from the editor in the newsroom. Those days have either died or they are dying. It's people posting stuff on Facebook. It's citizen journalism, but it's perfectly good journalism. And I guess for those individuals, they've got to take a tough call here. Either they go back to basics and carry on doing and asking the tough questions, or they have to leave the country. They have to leave their own country because the potential tariff might be a jail term on trumped-up charges. Yeah, that's exactly right. First of all, if you notice, a number of these journalists that are being attacked or media sources are independent media. We're not talking oftentimes traditional media. It's not the Al Jazeera's, the CNN's, or, uh, or the New York Times in many cases in, in these countries. It's more independent media that has sprung up, oftentimes internet-based. Uh, the second is, of course, as you say, the sort of independent journalists or even citizens posting information. Um, but what makes this particularly toxic or threatening to the government is it occurs in a moment when there is, the government is prohibiting uh, clear access to data, reliable data, on infection rates. So they're particularly threatened because they are limiting the media's uh, uh, access to information. And so they're, they're being caught within uh, a toxic environment for them uh, that then threatens journalists. And so we've seen, for example, in the case of Guatemala, the Guatemalan president has said it needs to put, he needs to put the media on quarantine. In other words, he wants to basically shut it down and limit its access to information and its ability to report. And that is a very troubling sign. Christopher, this is an important story that does need to be told perhaps again and again. Good to talk to you. A, a really, really compelling conversation. Thank you very much, Christopher Peter. Sabatini there uh, from Chatham House in London.